Good morning. Today is Wednesday. It is August the 28th. The year is 2019. So some people have been complaining about my video. Yeah, I have a new MacBook that I'm going to be using to do my new videos on. I just haven't got it set up yet because I needed the, um, off the MacBook, but I got to go back to the Apple store because I forgot a few things. So I'm still recording on my old MacBook, which seems to have some type of virus or something going on. I have not had a chance to wipe it to repair it because I was trying to, let me close these things. I was trying to um, save some of the stuff that's on here and I'm going to wipe it and a friend of mine is going to fix this MacBook. This is in good condition. It's just something's going on with this damn MacBook. Uh, hard to explain. It's got, I've never experienced uh, MacBooks having um viruses so to speak so something's keep something's popping up and i really don't know what's going on here so anyway i have a new macbook but i gotta get some new things before i can start using it so that will improve the quality of the video i don't know why this video is acting up right now but i can see the video is recording incorrectly um and so i have to figure out what could be going on with this thing i'll just drop it off get fixed and cleaned up and that will resolve this. I can continue to. I try. I always like to have two MacBooks: one to record on, one to um, store stuff on. So I'm gonna use this one for storage because this the old. This one's a couple of years old, and so I don't know. But anyway, something's going on with it. So forgive the quality. And somebody was sending a note saying they didn't like the quality of the sound and blah 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 blah. You know, that niggas always got some nasty and negative to say, especially if they hear the video that's striking close to home today, motherfucking ass. What did he say? What did he say? Turn that up. I can't hear his ass in it now, man. So, for those of you, just be a little patient. I'm going by the Apple Store today. But, uh, I saw something that caught my eye. It's a study that says there's a correlation between diabetes and obesity rates within black churches. Sure, you all, we know that on every corner in the black community, they got a Davida dialysis clinic. I have many members of my family who've been on dialysis. I have, my, I have a sister who died from dialysis. I have an uncle who's taken dialysis. I have cousins on dialysis. I have a lot of family members and friends on dialysis. The key to it is, that, um, and it's just weird, but they said that there are correlations between religion, diabetes, and obesity. Within the African American church, it's not like just keeping it real. We know these niggas don't work out. Black folks don't want to work out when he's screaming to Jesus. That's the exercise. One, two, three, four, five. And do it again, man. One, two, three, four, five. Now shout out to Jesus. 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 That's their exercise. I guess it does get the heart rate up. Black folks on exercise when they say, I, you know, I'm one, of the, I'm one of the very few members of my family who goes, when I leave my doctor, I have a doctor's appointment today, where they be test, making sure my blood pressure's fine, I have a guard be there. I have a doctor's appointment, they're going to check my blood pressure, takes the slides from a lab, lab or two. And, um, I go to my doctor's appointment today, that's why I'm, um, I don't have a shirt, I'm going to try to get ready, get dressed, but I want to do this video real quick. I go hop in the shower and run my ass out to the doctor's appointment. But um, I always get my, look, I go to my doctor's appointments faithfully. I don't know about y'all, but I go to the gym faithfully. I go to the doctor's appointment. I'm not waiting for Jesus and no savior and salvation to come fix a motherfucking thing over here. I don't have the time for that shit. And these people sit up in them churches. So they say, and this was a study which was published last month in the Journal of Religion and Health. You can find it all over the internet. It's a new Duke University study. The study published last month in the Journal of Religion and Health cites two main findings. Black Americans identifying as Baptists are more likely to have diabetes than those identifying as Catholic or Pedestrian. And Pedestrian, I don't know what the church is. And black men who go to church five or more times a week, five or more times a week, what they doing up there at church five times a week? Something ain't right with that. Black men who go to church five or more times a week are three times more likely to be obese than their counterparts who seldom are ever or rarely attend. We just say researchers aren't saying church attendance causes diabetes or obesity, only there's a correlation. Yeah, if you're sitting up in church 
three to five times a week instead of having your ass at LA Fitness, I can imagine. And I ain't well, yet walking to a church and saw elliptical machines and treadmills. Some churches do have gyms. They need to all have gyms right there in the pulpit. So you can listen to the pastor talk this bullshit while you over there running on that damn treadmill. Bentley Edwards, who also teaches general internal medicine, said considerable health research has been done comparing the traits of white Christians to black Christians. But relatively little work has been done looking at differences between denominations of black Christians or between black members of the same denomination who have different roles in the church and participate to a different degree. Well, let me just say this. Woo! Well, let me read this. About a third of all American men and women are obese. Nearly half of African Americans are... Okay, so... About a, th a third of all American men and women are obese. Nearly half of all African Americans are obese. Increasing their risk for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. You know, you got fifty percent black folks running around here overweight. Churches, especially those with predominantly black membership, have long been recognized for their potential improving their health and wellness of the members of those in the community. They could have the potential, you know if they had some programs in there. A key to reducing diabetes and obesity rates lies, lies in how in finding how these health issues might be connected to religion. Yeah, we know how it's connected to religion. Ladies and motherfuckers sitting on their goddamn ass screaming at Jesus. It ain't it ain't hard to figure this one out. <laughs> Trust me. I got a lot of religious people in my family who are all overweight with diabetes, high blood pressure, on dialysis, and every damn thing going through kidney failure because they're too busy screaming at Jesus. I have, I can't, let me think, I can think of a few people, I can count on my hand a few family members, cousins, and family members I know who go to a gym and work out. Everybody else just go to church every Sunday and Bible study went in the end. It's just weird to me. How could you all, we live in 2019, there's so much good news about taking care of your health out there and staying healthy, but a lot of people just don't do it. They don't want to take care of their health. They'd rather sit around and scream to Jesus and pray, wait for some miracle to happen until they end up in the hospital with serious health ailments and issues. It's just crazy to me. I've been working out forever. I've been in the gym since I was 19 years of age. I love working out. I leave this doctor appointment today. I'm going to grab something for breakfast someplace and run my ass towards the gym. And get my workout over with about this, this, this morning before I head back into the house. I'm always going to take care of my health. Only have one body. Your health is your wealth. You can scream to Jesus all day long. And if you don't have your act together, and you're not exercising, working out, and you're not treating your body right, you will end up at Davida's dialysis clinic. I've seen this. And that Davida ain't no damn joke. And being on the dialysis is not easy. Anybody tells you differently than otherwise. And you all, we have to remember we have a huge amount of black folks who suffer from kidney-related issues because of their weight. And I don't know if diabetes causes... I guess it kind of go hand-in-hand. Hand. Oh, clap, it kind of hurt my hand. I guess diabetes... Um, if you're overweight, you know, you can diabetes. I guess it all goes hand-in-hand. Hand. Diabetes... Obesity, dialysis clinic, it all leads down that path. Now, if these churches promoted more health exercise programs, I'm sure there are some churches out there that do promote healthy exercise. I, mean, I know for a fact there are some churches that even have churches. Um, churches. I know there's some churches that do have gyms inside of them. I've seen this. And so I, they're trying to get more people to exercise. The whole purpose of that report was to point out to religious people to get up off their damn ass and do what needed to be done. But, I don't know. Makes you wonder. Are the leaders of the church who are so busy that they over rely on high calorie drive through restaurant food? That's another thing, too. You know, they're so busy ripping and running the church back and forth. Um, and it's just weird, y'all, because I know a lot of folks I know who are overweight who stay in that church. I have a friend who's constantly singing this choir and singing here. I keep telling him, well, you need to get your ass to a gym. But he's constantly, and he's, well, he got mad at me because one time he sent me a video uh, of him singing in this choir. And I looked at the video and I said, man, you need to lose weight. 
I just want you to hear it in my voice singing. I said, I heard your voice singing, but I was looking at you, how much weight you gain. I said, man, you need to lose some damn weight. I said, I'm not trying to be mean. I said, this is starting to get ridiculous. He ain't like that. Yeah, man. But it was true. Y'all used to weigh 330 pounds. I had got up to 330 pounds. Right now, I'm in about 240-something. Around 240s. The lowest, when I went from 330, and I realized how, when I was 330 pounds, everybody said, you look so great, Walter. I couldn't sleep at nighttime. I could barely tie my damn shoes. I was snoring so loud, the neighbors could hear me snoring. It would shake the building. I'd be asleep and snore and wake up. What was that? Was there a bear in the house? Yeah, my black ass. I had to drop 100 pounds. My back was killing me. 100 pound loss, I got down to 230 pounds. Didn't stay at 230, I kind of fluctuated back and forth. My goal, my blood pressure, pressure normalized. Whenever I'm under 250, I'm fine. If I get above that 250, into that 260, 270, 280, 290, 300 pound range, my ass is in trouble. When I was doing so many videos, yeah, I was, at some points I was 330 pounds. Go back and look at those videos. I had to drop that weight. I went on an extensive program to cardio, cardiovascular, I had to lose that weight, and that's exactly what I did, so luckily, I was able to drop the weight and get my weight down to something that's a lot more acceptable, um, and help best of my health, shit, I couldn't be running around with that damn weight, I'd be dead someplace, and I'm still working to get my weight down, and my, uh, my goal is to stay at 230, and I'm working on it now, I'm going to get my weight down, I'm not going to, you know, Earlier this year, I had got down to two, about 230-something. Right around my birthday, I got down. My goal is to get back there. So anyway, I'm going to attach this link to this video. It's a very interesting video. It's kind of long, but I'm going to try to see it. And it's just about the study that finds the correlation between diabetes and obesity rates within black churches. But it is interesting that 50% of black Americans are overweight. That's scary. Wow, 50% of us, you can see it. You, you, you don't have to. We don't need a study to tell us that's all you got to do is walk down a, a black neighborhood or into a black mall, into a black store. You will see it with your own two eyeballs. And black women, I love my sisters, but y'all got to get up off your ass and get into a damn gym. It's a shame. The, 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 the black, when I see a black sister in the gym, I always walk up and say hello. I encourage them. I am glad you're here. If you have any questions, I always tell them, you got any questions you want to know, just talk to me. If you, they, they, they need you talk to me. I encourage them. Because they, the women, is, black women are black bone of our backbones of our community. they got to stay in good health and, and, and spread this knowledge to their children and their family members. We can't just sit around and expect a miracle to happen. It's not going to happen. You have to take care of your health. Like I said, when I see them black women in, that, in the gyms, struggling, trying, hustling, puff, I say go. And I give them good advice the best I can. And I've noticed, I've seen many of my sisters, black women, drop weight significantly. If they stay consistent, change their diet. I've seen them drop the weight. I've seen them from their struggles. They, people just don't, we all see these women running around looking in great shape. They didn't start there. They started someplace much worse, and they woke up, and they had to come to the gym and fight to get to that damn gym, get on that treadmill, get on that elliptical machine, take those classes, take them exercise classes, get a hire a trainer. It's work, but it's work that can save their lives. So I love to see, I love to see my, my people, black people, white people, Asian people. I love, I have, because it's funny, the gym I go to now, there's a lot of um, Indian um, guys over there, and they come up and ask me, and that's another thing I love about other races, they're not intimidated to come and ask questions, where black folks, we tend to stand back, back, and I don't know why we're like this, but I've had more Indians, white people, Jews, there's another um, group of people in the gym I go to, they come and ask questions, they don't mind, they're, 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 they'll see me rest, and they come over and ask a question, but black people, we tend to be a little standoffish, that's when I see your sisters in there. I make sure I go talk to them because I want them to feel welcome to the gym and have a warm environment. So they come, and then they come and they give me a hug and we talk and we laugh. And I say, well, get, get on that treadmill. You know what time it is? I say, yeah, let me get started. And it's a struggle even for myself. I love working out, but don't think I work up every morning. I'm going to the gym. I work out some mornings. I wake up and say, well, you know, I go to this damn gym. But I get up and I go. I get it over with. 
because I know I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. I'm 49. I got to stay in shape so I can live longer. See, I'm not running around here. You know, when I was younger, now I'm more in tune with my diet, what I put in my body. Like I said, everybody lined up for the fried chicken sandwiches. It's okay to treat yourself to something like that occasionally. I would love it. I like a fried chicken sandwich every blue moon. I mean, it's been a minute since I had one. I mean, I might run through. When I go to Chick-fil-A, I normally get the grilled chicken sandwich. I might get the club because it has a little bit of bacon on it. But I do realize that even at Chick-fil-A, the salt content is sky high with that mess. And it's not healthy for me. And I'm going to find out today when I get to this doctor's appointment how my blood pressure is. It should be fine because um, I've been checking it myself. So it was, but she's going to have a new doctor. I was, I was with the same doctor for 25 years. And so she retired. So now I'm over at this younger doctor's office and she don't play. And she is very aggressive. And she makes you all these appointments and then referrals. I'm like, damn, we can do this shit. And it's just a lot of stuff. And it's just how she is, so. I gotta get my ass dressed and get off this computer. Let me run a bit hopping these shots. I can get the hell out of here and go to this damn doctor's appointment. I will see y'all later on today. Hopefully, everything will go great at this doctor's appointment. I'll be there in the next hour. Today is Wednesday. It's August 28th. The year is 2019. I am going to try to attach this video. I'm going to try to. If not, I'll just put the link. There's a video that um, I want you all to see that talks about that. I'm going to try to. I don't know if I have time to attach it. Um, we'll see. Anyway, today is Wednesday, August 28th, year 2019. I'm out of here. Enjoy your day. Get to a gym, y'all. Exercise. Take care of your health. Go to a gym and scream to Jesus. Put on your favorite gospel music, whoever you like to, and get on that treadmill and scream Jesus and run down and run on that treadmill or walk or exercise. And if you can't make it to a gym, go outside. I know it's been hot this summer. Sure, Lord, it's been hot. But go exercise. Do something. Watch your diet. Stay away from all them greasy fried chicken sandwiches. Treat yourself occasionally. Nothing wrong with that. Watch your diet. Watch what you eat. 50% of African Americans are obese. That's something. Something that says a lot about us. Is, uh, a lot of us a lot of us are not dieting. A lot of us are not eating healthy. And we are not exercising. That's basically what that report is saying. We're still busy screaming to Jesus in the church. Those are just, it's, it's, there's a correlation there. And it's not healthy. Anyway, I'm out of here. And enjoy your Wednesday.